Okay, let's talk about physical AI. So, physical AI. Imagine, imagine, whereas your large language model, you give it your context, your prompt on the left, and it generates tokens one at a time to produce the output. That's basically how it works. The amazing thing is this model in the middle is quite large, has billions of parameters. The context length is incredibly large because you might decide to load in a PDF. In my case, I might load in several PDFs before I ask it a question. Those PDFs are turned into tokens. The attention, the basic attention characteristic of a transformer has every single token find its relationship and relevance against every other token. So you could have hundreds of thousands of tokens, and the computational load increases quadratically. And it does this, the, all of the parameters, all of the input sequence, processes it through every single layer of the transformer, and it produces one token. That's the reason why we need a Blackwell. And then the next token is produced when the current token is done. It puts the current token into the input sequence and takes that whole thing and generates the next token. It does it one at a time. This is the transformer model. It's the reason why it is so, so incredibly effective, computationally demanding. What if, instead of PDFs, it's your surrounding? And what if, instead of the prompt, a question, it's a request? You go over there and pick up that, you know, that box and bring it back. And instead of what is produced in tokens as text, it produces action tokens. Well, that I just described is a very sensible thing for the future of robotics. And the technology is right around the corner. But what we need to do is we need to create the effective, effectively the world model of, you know, as opposed to GPT, which is a language model. And this world model has to understand the language of the world. It has to understand physical dynamics. We know that most models today have a very hard time with. And so we would like to create a world, we need a world foundation model. Today we're announcing a very big thing. We're announcing NVIDIA Cosmos, a world foundation model that is designed, that was created to understand the physical world. And the only way for you to really understand this is to see it. Today we're announcing that Cosmos is open licensed. It's open available on GitHub. <clears throat> We hope, we hope that this moment, and there's a, there's a small, medium, large for uh, uh, very fast models, um, you know, mainstream models, and also teacher models, basically not knowledge transfer models. Cosmo, Cosmo's world foundation model being open, we really hope will do for the world of robotics and industrial AI what Llama 3 has done for enterprise AI. The magic happens when you connect Cosmos to Omniverse, and the reason fundamentally is this. Omniverse is a physics grounded, not physically grounded, but physics grounded. It's algorithmic physics, principled physics simulation grounded system. It's a simulator. When you connect that to Cosmos, it provides the grounding, the ground truth that can control and to condition the Osmos generation. As a result, what comes out of Osmos is grounded on truth. This is exactly the same idea as connecting a large language model to a RAG, to a retrieval augmented generation system. You want to ground the AI generation on ground truth. And so the combination of the two gives you a physically simulated, a physically grounded multiverse generator. And the application, the use cases are really quite exciting. And of course, uh, for robotics, uh, for industrial applications, uh, it is very, very clear. This Cosmos plus Os pl uh, Omniverse plus Cosmos represents the third computer that's necessary for building robotic systems. Every robotics company will ultimately have to build three computers. A robotics, the robotic system could be a factory, the robotic system could be a car, it could be a robot. You need three fundamental computers. One computer, of course, to train the AI. We call it the DGX computer to train the AI. Another, of course, when you're done, to deploy the AI. 
we call that AGX. That's inside the car in the robot or in an AMR or you know, at the, uh, in, a, in a stadium or whatever it is. These computers are at the edge and they're autonomous. But to connect the two, you need a digital twin. And this is all the simulations that you were seeing. The digital twin is where the AI that has been trained goes to practice, to be refined, to do its synthetic data generation, reinforcement learning AI feedback, such and such. And so it's the digital twin of the AI. These three computers are going to be working interactively. NVIDIA's strategy for uh, the industrial world, and we've been talking about this for some time, is this three-computer system. You know, instead of a three three-body problem, we have a three-computer solution. And so it's the NVIDIA robotics. The AV revolution has arrived. After so many years, with Waymo's success and Tesla's success, it is very, very clear autonomous vehicles has finally arrived. Well, our offering to this industry is the three computers, the training systems to train the AIs, the simulation systems, and and the, and the synthetic data generation systems, Omniverse and now Cosmos, and also the computer that's inside the car. Each car company might, might work with us in a different way, use one or two or three of the computers. We're working with just about every major car company around the world, Waymo and Zooks and Tesla, of course, in their data center, BYD, uh, the largest uh, EV company in the world, JLR's got a really cool car coming, Mercedes, because a fleet of cars coming with NVIDIA starting, with this, starting this year going to production. And I'm super, super pleased to announce that today, Toyota and NVIDIA are going to partner together to create their next generation AVs. Just so many, so many cool companies. Uh, Lucid and Rivian and Xiaomi and, of course, uh, Volvo. Just so many different companies. Wabi is uh, building uh, self-driving trucks. Aurora uh, we announced this week also that Aurora is going to use NVIDIA to build self-driving trucks. Autonomous, every, 100 million cars built each year, a, a billion cars, vehicles on the road all over the world, a trillion miles that are driven around the world each year. That's all going to be either highly autonomous or, you know, fully autonomous coming up. And so this is going to be a very, lar very large industry. I predict that this will likely be the first multi-trillion dollar robotics industry. This, indus this business for us, um, notice in just, just a few uh, of these cars that are starting to ramp into the world, uh, our business is already $4 billion, and this year probably on a run rate of about $5 billion. So really significant business already. This is going to be very large. Well, today we're announcing that our next generation processor for the car, our next generation computer for the car is called Thor. I have one right here. Hang on a second. Okay, this is Thor. This is Thor. This is, this is a robotics computer. This is a robotics computer. It takes sensors and just a madness amount of sensor information. Process it, you know, umpteen cameras, high resolution, radars, LIDARs, they're all coming into this chip. And this chip has to process all that sensor turn them into tokens, put them into a transformer, and predict the next path. And this AV computer is now in full production. Thor is 20 times the processing capability of our last generation Orin, which is really the standard of autonomous vehicles today. And so this is just really quite, quite incredible. Thor is in full production. This robotics processor, by the way, also goes into a full robot. And so it could be an AMR, it could be a... a a uh, human or robot, it uh, could be the brain, it could be the uh, manipulator. Uh, this, ro this processor basically is a universal robotics computer. The second part of our drive system that I'm incredibly proud of is the dedication to safety. Drive OS, I'm pleased to announce, is now the first software-defined programmable AI computer that has been certified up to ASOL D which is the highest standard of functional safety for automobiles. The only and the highest. And so I'm really, really proud of this. ASOL D, ISO 26262. It is um, the work of some 15,000 engineering years. This is just extraordinary work. And as a result of that, CUDA is now a functional, safe computer. And so if you're building a robot, NVIDIA CUDA, yep. Yeah. 
Okay, so, so now I, wanted to, I told you I was going to show you what would we use Omniverse and Cosmos to do in the context of self-driving cars. And, you know, today, instead of showing you a whole bunch of uh, uh, videos of, of cars driving on the road, uh, I'll show you some of that too. Um, but I want to show you how we use the car to reconstruct digital twins automatically using AI and use that capability to train future AI models. Okay, let's play it. The autonomous vehicle revolution is here. Building autonomous vehicles, like all robots, requires three computers. NVIDIA DGX to train AI models, Omniverse to test drive and generate synthetic data, and Drive AGX, a supercomputer in the car. Building safe autonomous vehicles means addressing edge scenarios, but real world data is limited. So synthetic data is essential for training. The Autonomous Vehicle Data Factory, powered by NVIDIA Omniverse, AI models, and Cosmos, generates synthetic driving scenarios that enhance training data by orders of magnitude. First, OmniMap fuses map and geospatial data to construct drivable 3D environments. Driving scenario variations can be generated from replay drive logs or AI traffic generators. Next, a neural reconstruction engine uses autonomous vehicle sensor logs to create high fidelity 4D simulation environments. It replays previous drives in 3D and generates scenario variations to amplify training data. Finally, Edify 3DS automatically searches through existing asset libraries or generates new assets to create sim-ready scenes. The Omniverse scenarios are used to condition Cosmos to generate massive amounts of photorealistic data, reducing the sim to real gap. And with text prompts, generate near infinite variations of the driving scenario. With Cosmos Nemotron video search, the massively scaled synthetic data set, combined with recorded drives, can be curated to train models. NVIDIA's AI Data Factory scales hundreds of drives into billions of effective miles, setting the standard for safe and advanced autonomous driving. Is that incredible? We take, take thousands of drives and turn them into billions of miles. We are going to have mountains of training data for autonomous vehicles. Of course, we still need actual cars on the road. Of course, we will continuously collect data for as long as we shall live. However, synthetic data generation using this multiverse, physically based, physically grounded capability so that we generate data for training AIs that are physically grounded and accurate and or plausible so that we could have an enormous amount of data to train with. The AV industry is here. Uh, this is an in incredibly exciting time, super, super, super uh, uh, excited about the next several years. I think you're going to see, just as computer graphics was revolutionized such incredible pace, you're going to see the pace of AV development increasing tremendously over the next several years. I, th I think the next part is, is robotics. So um, the chat GPT moment for general robotics is just around the corner. And in fact, all of the enabling technologies that I've been talking about is going to make it possible for us in the next several years to see very rapid breakthroughs, surprising breakthroughs in, in general robotics. Now, the reason why general robotics is so important is whereas robots with tracks and wheels require special environments to accommodate them, there are three robots, three robots in the world that we can make that require no green fields. Brown field adaptation is perfect. If we, if we could possibly build these amazing robots, we could deploy them in exactly the world that we've built for ourselves. These three robots are, one, agentic robots, agentic AI, 
because, you know, they're information workers. So long as they could accommodate uh, the computers that we have in our offices, it's going to be great. Number two, self-driving cars. And the reason for that is we spent 100 plus years building roads and cities. And then number three, human or robots. If we have the technology to solve these three, this will be the largest technology industry the world's ever seen. And so we think that the robotics era is just around the corner. The critical capability is how to train these robots. In the case of human or robots, the imitation information is rather hard to collect. And the reason for that is uh, in the case of car, you just drive it. We're driving cars all the time. In the case of these human or robots, the imitation information, the, the human demonstration is rather laborious to do. And so we need to come up with a clever way to take hundreds of demonstrations, thousands of human demonstrations, and somehow use artificial intelligence and omniverse to synthetically generate millions of synthetically generated motions. And from those motions, the AI can learn uh, how to perform a task. Let me show you how that's done. General Robotics is arriving, powered by NVIDIA Isaac Group. Okay. Well, let me, let, me, let me tell you what I told you. I told you that we are in production with three new Blackwells. Not only is the Grace Blackwell supercomputers, NVLink 72s, in production all over the world, we now have three new Blackwell systems in production. One amazing AI, foundational, world foundation model, the world's first physical AI foundation model is open, available to activate the world's industries of robotics and such, and three, and three robotics, three robots working on uh, agentic AI, uh, human or robots, and self-driving cars. Uh, it's been an incredible year. I want to thank all of you for your partnership.